the Xbox Series S controversial bottleneck claims continues. Now, supporters of the Xbox and what their direction is moving forward are saying to people watching this debate, don't pay attention to those complaining about the Series S's possible bottlenecking of future development next gen because these people don't have access to the quote unquote dev kits. However, a video resurfaces that gives legitimacy to these bottleneck claims. And that video comes from one than none other than Brad Sams of therot.com. Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Do me a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, rock those bells. So you know when I'm dropping these doses, I appreciate all y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal, y'all know the reason, and y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, let me show you something. Yeah, we're going to start off the video with this. Okay, so here is a series of tweets. Now, let me see if I can increase this so you guys can see this a little bit better. There we go. So this is a series of tweets that were kicked off by the homie Porter Rock. If y'all don't know who Porter Rock is, Porter Rock is uh, of the top tier of the tier S Pony League. <laughs> he is PlayStation all day, every day, right? So in regards to this battle over the hearts and minds regarding whether if Xbox Series S is going to be a true bottleneck next gen, of course, Porter Rock is on the side that it is, right? And some people are saying, like I said in the bumper, you know, well, the people that are complaining don't have access to the dev kits. And Porter Rock makes an interesting point that the people that you are listening to are just known Xbox fanboys. So we can sling smud all over the place. And, they, and he takes a couple of clips of the person that um, is cited and saying that the Xbox Series S won't be a, a, a bottleneck. Here's the full story in totality, right? The full story is, is that um, people believe that developers really wanted to come out this generation booming. You know what I'm saying? They just want to come out at launch with a big bang. And that was a big bang in, in development and, and gameplay innovation and things of that nature, right? And the theory is, is that even though PC is normally the lowest common denominator, you were gonna to start to see a trend where people just weren't going to say, hey, look, if we, even for PC, if we can't get these games playing on a on a, 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 a plethora of devices, strong or weak, then we just can't do it. You were gonna to start to see PC development say, hey, look, this time around for some of these more uh, let's say demanding processes or demanding games, we're cutting you off more than we normally would. Like for instance, you're starting to see games that are for minimum specs requiring you to have an SSD on PC. We've never seen that before. And a lot of people feel that that was influenced by the specs, the powerful specs that is, uh, by the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. And the fact that those are both running now off of SSDs internally. That now they're looking at PC and they're like, you're gonna have to step your game up. Like we can't be developing for GTX 560s anymore and mechanical drives, Westgate mechanical drives made in 1982. We can't do that anymore, right? And that was going to begin the apex of further innovation and, and, and more enhanced game development, right? Um, and the Xbox Series S threw a monkey wrench into all that because if you're going to make games for Xbox, then you got to factor in the Series S. And they say because of the VRAM and, and, and the I guess the smaller SSD, or some, because of components of this console, I'm not going to lie and pretend like I'm, I'm a Bibble Watts and Gigahertz <laughs> aficionado. I'm not. But this is what I've been hearing from those aficionados, that because of the elements within the Xbox Series S, that that was going that's putting a big damper on the hopes and dreams that they're going to have right and if that is the case what's going to happen is some games some big ticket games might just skip the xbox if this is all true right 
And people that are Xbox enthusiasts, they don't want that. Gamers don't want that at all. Especially if they're being driven to buy the Xbox Series S at launch. Who wants a system that within a couple of years is going to be obsolete because all the big, 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 explosive, big ticket, triple A, quadruple A games aren't coming to the platform because they can't be supported. They, they can't support the Series S. Okay. And this thread illustrates the dynamic of this discussion. Porter Rock, you know, dismisses the guy that's in favor of the Series S being introduced to next gen. Somebody else says, well, is he wrong? No. Another gamer cites other accounts from um, Activision developers, Call of Duty developers. Now this person tries something here, <coughs> excuse me, I found a little peculiar, but again, I'm not an aficionado, so I, I don't know even to this point, I'm not 100% sure if they're right or wrong. I believe that they're wrong and I'll explain why. So they say Activision doesn't have Xbox Series S dev, dev kits. And the second one is a mobile dev trying to discredit the, the devs claims. So I ask, hold on, Remedy? don't have dev kits you know that was one of the developers that was out there you know what i'm saying uh, one of the guys was from Ribbity from my, from what i had um saw and aren't they working on the crossfire x campaign and he said i said xbox series s dev kits right so this whole thing about who has what dev kits didn't make sense to me <coughs> excuse me for the simple fact that if you believe the theory of scale up and scale down um, then how do you develop a game that you can scale down if the capabilities of the lesser console aren't part of the original dev kit? Like that just doesn't make sense to me. And we have an article here that I dug up that lays doubt to what this poster is saying about people not having ex access to the Xbox Series S dev kit. Again, I could be wrong, but again, it lays doubt. Um, I want to be very clear by, by stating that. It lays out. Um, and I say, don't think that's accurate. Devs were reported to have issues with the bottleneck last year, hence the contemplation to cancel Lockhart. The fear was devs would take the easy road out and scale up, opposed to scale down, which underutilizes the Xbox Series X. And this is courtesy of a TrustedReviews.com article that I was able to dig up. Um, person said I don't trust that article and then I did some more digging and I discovered a video because I couldn't remember who had this video but somebody went in complete detail um, of what the concerns were and they did it very concisely and that was none than other than Brad Sams of PaulTheRot.com for those of you that don't know who Brad Sams is Brad Sams is um, an insider of all insiders like Therot the, the Paul Therott people um, have connections to Xbox. They have so for a very long time. Anything that they say is going on with Xbox has pretty much been proven um, even before Xbox announces it. There, there is no reason to doubt the things that they're telling you. And what Paul does in this video that I'm about to play a clip from, a very vital clip from, is that he is very careful in saying, hey, look, it looks like that because of bottleneck concerns, that people saw in the dev kit of the Xbox Series S, right? So that whole Xbox, nobody's seen the Xbox Series S dev kit yet. That seems like a, far, but, uh, a farce, but from what people can see from the Xbox Series S capabilities, they were concerned. And because of those concerns, it seems like that the Series S, the Lockhart right now is being omitted. But he does say in his video, if you watch the full video, it's not in the clip that I'm providing, but he does say in the video that things can change. But right now it looks like that they're scrapping the Series S for future development. All right. And so this person says they'll watch tomorrow. Of course they will. <laughs> but with that said, what I want to do now, with no further ado, is play for you the clip from Paul, I mean, from, from, from Brad Sams that details all this. So let's do this right now. And we'll talk about it on the back end. That being said, here is what I have heard. And some other people have actually heard very similar things. First off, when you tell a developer to build a game for a next generation console, and there are two options, let's just say Lockhart and Anaconda, what you do is you build to make sure that it's gonna run well on Lockhart and then scale it up to work well on Anaconda because it's easier to scale up than it is to scale down. And so Microsoft was getting a lot of feedback from developers who have access to this information in the dev kits saying, hey, 
uh, we're gonna build for Lockhart and then we'll just scale it up and hopefully it looks good and hopefully it runs well and all that good stuff at 4K. And that is not what Microsoft wanted to hear. They wanted to hear, right, that you're gonna have these great 1080p experiences and the great, great 4K and developers like, look, we have limited resources. We're gonna build for the low end and then scale it up because we know it will work on the high end. And that is not what Microsoft wants to hear going into the next generation console wars. That being said, here is what all right y'all uh, it was so it was so goddamn great i wanted to play it again but i gotta continue with the video so with that being said the theory is again that the xbox series s with its lower specs the lower vram and and other issues that supposedly are within the box that yes is great for consumers that want to get into next gen gaming if you know if they're fine with xbox's catalog but it's not great for the long term of gaming because they got to develop with this console in mind, right? Now, if that's the case, if that's the case, there's some things we also need to consider too, all right, from this video. Um, he, again, talks about the removal of Lockhart from the plans, cites the concerns from the developers with the dev kit access, again, so that whole, they don't have, nobody had access to the dev kits of the farts. Um, and it, and they cites, if you listen to the whole video, he says that they believe that xCloud was progressing so well that that was part of the reason why they said, okay, well, we're going to just follow the heed. We're just going to heed the concerns of these developers. We're just going to scrap Lockhart because they felt like that xCloud was so far along. Okay. Now here are my thoughts on why this video was so pivotal. First and foremost, again, as I said earlier, Brad Sams is part of the Therat team of insiders. They are invaluable insiders towards anything Microsoft and Xbox. Everything that they've pretty much said has happened, has happened. They are not to be doubted. Also, um, I do believe that it is fathomable that there was over uh, optimism over xCloud and what it could do for a low end entry into next generation. That is believable. You got to remember the time frame. That video that you just heard is a snippet from an overall video from Brad Sams that's from June of 2019. In June of 2019, we didn't have the negative cloud gaming reception that we have now courtesy of Stadia. You know, Stadia is the red-headed stepchild, and because it's a sole uh, cloud gaming solution, it helps spark this, this, this fake outrage and this idiot hurt mentality towards cloud gaming. We didn't have those concerns at that apex um, when these thoughts were running through Microsoft that they're true, all right? Also, we didn't see what the other cloud gaming platforms would be doing out of the box full retail. We didn't see again what Stadia would be like with its 4K 60 capabilities and the boop, 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 you know, any, on any screen, just like that. We didn't even see GFN, what they would be doing out of the box. We didn't even see what, um, the homies uh, shadow pc would be able to do we didn't see what the retail versions look like but it looks like that they were closer to 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 scratching the surface of trying to match what daddy devices could do at all levels they were scratching that surface a lot more sooner than what xbox was doing and then they got hit with what covid so that very well slowed down the progress that xcloud could make as far as being a fathomable um entry point into next gen gaming had a big impact so you got to take all those things into consideration so being that we're taking all those things in consideration we got to think of this um a similar dilemma happened with this whole no gamer left behind mantra that phil spencer and the xbox officials tried to ram down our throats remember the those that say no gamer left behind is going to you know cause roadblocks for development that's just fanboy fodder remember that and then it was discovered that it wasn't just fanboy fodder so xbox has serious trust issues as it relates to this whole scaling up scaling down bottleneck of these lower uh, of the lower gen, gen console or the specs of it at least and if we are to believe microsoft if they are to win back our trust we need full transparency okay 
We need Microsoft to either tell us the truth or the developer concerns legit and what the system proposes, or if not, we need to know exactly what was put in place to address the concerns if it's not an issue. It appears by all intents and purposes, and I believe Brad Sams, you know what I'm saying, that at some point in time, people saw the specs and the capabilities of the S, and those people were developers, and when they saw it, they said, hold up, wait a minute, and, Either Xbox scrapped it, went back to the drawing board, and brought it back out, and maybe those people aren't familiar with the new iterations of it, that's a possibility, or they scrapped it with the original intent of never bringing it back, but then because of the advent of how slow xCloud's development got, you know, became because of COVID and how they were being outpaced by their competitors, they decided we got to bring a low entry console back into the game to the, de to, to the despise of developers who thought they were over that road hill, uh, over that roadblock. So <clears throat> many things to consider, but if Xbox isn't transparent and don't fully explain what they're doing and they, they, they help uh, gin up the, the the support of gamers in regards to why they're doing what they're doing and, and, and if they're not transparent about it I see no way Xbox charms your way out of this one period and with that being so it's going to be a rough launch year in the making <laughs> if this continues to pan out the way that it does especially with uh, PlayStation showcase a couple of days away from this recording if they drop that price to $399 for the digital edition or lower my god my god my god and that's it from your boy mm2k hey yo let me know what you think about what i have to say in the comment section below because like i always say who cares what i think but if you did like what i had to say check out the links below to follow me those links will lead you to the broadband bullies pnts network and hard knock digital culture with that said you all have a wonderful wonderful gaming day peace